Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Technical Advantage at Autodesk. And today I want to show you the difference between the trace operation as well as the engraving operation. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing I want to show you though is this great app within the Fusion 360 App Store that actually automatically generates your step jaws and your stock box based off some parameters. So let me go ahead and Google the Fusion App Store. And uh, when you take a look at inside the App Store, you'll see something called Soft Jaw and Stock Block Creation. If you download this, what happens is that it will install a feature right under the model workspace under Create, something called Soft Jaw Creation. Now this is really great because you can do a simulation and use this for the clear, for interference detection if your tool interferes with your jaws or even your, your stock. Take a look at this. If I activate that, it gives me these parameters that can key in. And if I'm using a, this is a Tormach whistle, if I'm going to use a Tormach vise, which is about like a five inch vise, I can key in the jaw length. So let's go with five inches. Then the width, let's go with an inch and a height two inches, and let's go with a groove width or the step jaw, the step groove, about 200 thou for each one. And then what do I want for the size of my stock for this whistle? Well, for the box width, let's go with one inch. It's a little under one inch. We're machine around it. And then for the length, let's go with actually three inches. It's a little under three inches though. Give us a little bit extra breathing room and a height of about half an inch. And all I have to do now is say okay, and it's gonna go ahead and generate the step jaws as well as the stock for me. Now this is really slick because now when we do the simulation, I'll show you in a minute how we can apply this. So let's take a look at the, the browser and what it's done for us. Is if I actually take a look at under the bodies, it gives me the actual stock. I can right click on it and say, create component from bodies, rename this component, let's say stock. Now we have the stock. If I right click on the stock, this is where I can actually change the opacity just to, just to take a look at it and see that part within the stock. Now this is the key, right? How did it know exactly how to generate the stock as well as the step jaws perfectly and place the whistle in the center of everything? Well, take a look at how I set this up and where the origin is. If we take a look on the right view and I turn on my origin, I actually have the origin at the center of the part and then below about a hundred thousandths. So the nice thing is that it's basing everything off the location of the origin and having it directly in the center. So keep in mind, depending on where your origin, in, origin is, that's where everything else is gonna be generated. Just a really, really important tip when you use this app. So anyhow, you can see just how this helped us out. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just going to take a look at just the whistle, right? Um, let's go and hop over to model, drop down to, to cam, and how do we use like what we just generated for the simulation? And what I just wanna point out really quick is if we go edit an operation, I can actually drop in our stock and then pick for mode, pick from solid, and then go pick that solid that just, that just got generated. And then two for under setup, I can turn on fixture and say these are my fixtures so when I run a simulation it will look and tell me if the tool collides with these fixtures in the area. So this is very, very valuable. Just to give you guys some ideas. Let me go and cancel out of that. And I'm just going to actually isolate the, uh, the whistle. So I'm just going to double click on the whistle. If I right click, come down to isolate just so I can take a look at it there. I'm going to turn off the origin and just zoom right in. So. The difference between trace and engrave. Let's take a look. Back over to cam, and I have this operation already set up, and what you'll see here is that the red means that I gotta regenerate the operations. So we added some hotkeys, and if I do Command G or Control G, what it does is it will go through and regenerate all my tool paths for each operation. I don't have to right click on each operation and say regenerate tool path. So that's a really, really slick feature of speeding up the process of regenerating all your tool paths. So now what you'll see is I'm gonna face the top of this, of this whistle, then come in and do a trace operation. Let's, let me show you what trace does, right? Or just a reminder. So if we right click, simulate, I'm gonna turn on the stock 
and we'll just zoom right in. I like to use wallpaper as my material, comes out a little bit cleaner. And then for the toolpath, jump down to tail. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and we'll just speed this up so we can see exactly face that top face. And now it's gonna come in, and if we zoom in, it's just gonna trace the contours of everything. But really what I want is the tool to sit in between and, and cut out the inside profile rather than trace these contours. And this is where engraving comes in. So if I close this out, what I can do is instead of reselecting all these contours again for the for actually the engraving operation, because it's about 39 contours, I can actually right click on trace, come down to create derived operation, go to 2D milling, and say, apply all the same tool and the same selections, but just to a different operation. As you can see here, it's gonna pick up all the same selections as well as the same tool, but just apply it to the engraving operation and go in and say, okay. So what this does is now it's actually gonna fit as much of the diameter of that tool within the perimeter of the contours. And if the, if the perimeter starts getting narrower, then the tool is gonna adjust in the Z axis and move up to try to fit as much as it can within there. So it's a great way to really get kind of this this look, the actual look that we have of embossing the Tormach logo. Uh, Take a look at another video that we have too that we did in our HSM Works package of how we applied the, the trace versus the engraving operation, but just another resource you guys can use in the upper right hand corner. But this is a great way to actually create what you actually have on the, on the screen right here, this, this embossing. So if I click on the face, click on the engrave operation, I just want those two. I can actually right click and just say suppress if I choose to and suppress that and suppress this actual trace operation if I don't want to see it anymore. Just right click suppress. Let's go and suppress that guy. And if I go ahead and select both of these guys, right click and say simulate. Let's take a look at turn on the stock. And you can actually see exactly what's going to happen right here. And I think this is, this is really, really key um, in regards to just, you know, what it gives us. So, we zoom right in, you can kind of see a quick preview of exactly what's going on here and even how it even kind of got all these contours out for us. So I'm gonna hit play and you're gonna see exactly what it's gonna do. So it's gonna first face the entire face, just like that. Then come in and now engrave in between the contours for me and adjust the z-axis height of the tool to fit as much as that tool diameter right within before it comes to that point. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you guys try it out in some different scenarios, but it's a really cool way to where instead of just tracing lines, now you can actually, if you emboss something, you can now gut it out the correct way. So hopefully that helps you out. Another tip I wanna to show too is how we can apply trace in working with a, an SVG file. And this comes up pretty often is you already might have an existing Adobe file or a .SVG file. How do we bring it in and work with it? And I would use the trace operation in, in this instance here. So I'm gonna activate now another operation on the backside. So if I ever flip this over, I'm gonna put actually the Fusion logo on here. I wanna activate this setup. So if I click on this op and then hit the little dot right circle right next to it, it activates the setup. So any new operation I do goes into this setup that, that's already created. So hop over to model, come down under insert and say insert SVG. I'm gonna select that top face to insert. Now under the file, I'm just gonna go and open up a file. I have a file of the Fusion logo. Say open. It's actually a pretty large logo, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you that I can scale it. So I can actually grab this little arc line. If I zoom out, you can see how big this guy is, just like that. And I can just scale that guy down, just like that. Let's zoom back in. And we can just play around with the scale, and we can always open it up in, in, a, in Adobe or snag it and edit it that way. But at least you guys get an idea of, of how we can scale it just within Fusion 360. So kind of place it just like this and say okay. Fantastic. Now, this is really key. So if I zoom in, let's say I want to now rotate the logo 90 degrees. 
And a lot of people have brought this up to me. Even if I highlight and I select that logo just like that, right click and say move, the, the triad doesn't come up. Now, what you have to do though, is if I go ahead and just reselect this like that, I, I can't move it. So if I come back, reselect it again, it brings up the sketch palette. And what you'll see here is something called fix unfix. Now this is key because really this logo is fixed once you place it on this face. And you have to unfix it. If you click on that, it turns it to blue, which means it's now underdefined. And now I can come in, select the logo, right click, say move, and this will now bring up the triad that I want to move around. This is really, really key when you work through these different systems is understanding that when you bring in the SVG, it places it right off the bat. From here now, you wanna take it, edit it, and rotate it, and this is where you have to uncheck the constraints or delete one of the constraints when it initially got placed. So just coming on in, right click, I can now rotate it around just like that, move it to the right direction it needs to be, say okay, and now that's where it's gonna be. So now all I have to do is apply the trace operation. So come back over here to cam, the cam workspace. This last setup is activated. Come on down to 2D. Let's go to the trace operation. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a tool. So under um, pick a chamfer mill, and let's just go with one of these guys that we had initially. And for my contours, we'll just go ahead and pick all the contours, so these, these lines. And under the Passes tab, we're gonna change now the axial offset to go down, because basically that logo is on the top face. It's just not gonna cut anywhere, right? Because it's the logo is placed on the top face, or the SVG file, I want it to go down an axial depth. Let's say we want to go down an axial depth of negative 5,000, something like this. Say okay, apply that. And then from here now, we can go through and simulate it. So if I just control G, again, we'll go through and regenerate all my tool paths, just like that. Of course, it doesn't generate the suppressed ones, but now I can select both of these guys, right click, simulate, come over here, turn on the stock. We won't leave it transparent, say play. Zoom in a little bit so you can see for first face it off. And then now it's gonna come in and let's turn off that, that sketch so you can see it. And trace that F, just like that. So the axial depth is really key, as well as this is where you can use the trace operation. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Hopefully you guys now understand the difference between the trace operation as well as engraving and where to use them. Try both of them out, depending on it. It's a case by case situation. Definitely take a look at our HSM Works video of how we use it. Another, just another example, upper right hand corner. Thanks again, guys, and follow me on Twitter.